Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Forex Edition Tip Turner. I'm Scott Luthold. This is the show where we pick a tip out of the jar and we talk about it in 15 minutes or less. So let's get started. Okay. So today we're going to talk about how to alleviate condensation buildup inside your rooftop tent. And I've had three different rooftop tents. I've had a Magellina by Autohome. I've had two iCamper Sky Camps. One of them's a four person, the other one's a mini. And for those of you that have rooftop tents, you probably are well aware that underneath the factory pad that's inside most rooftop tents is a metal surface. A lot of people like to remove the factory pad out of the rooftop tent because it might not be thick enough or comfortable enough. So uh, generally people will replace that with some kind of an air mattress, like maybe an X-PED air mattress, which is quite a bit thicker and a little more comfortable. And then of course you can deflate those air mattresses and it creates a lot more room inside the rooftop tent to store your, your sleeping system. I've decided to remove the factory pads out of my iCamper SkyCamp Mini, and I'm going to replace that with um, some X-PED air mattresses. And uh, generally speaking, when you're sleeping on that X-PED air mattress, your body's gonna heat up the air mattress. And if it's laying against that metal surface underneath, it's gonna cause condensation buildup and some moisture is gonna be there. And so there are ways that you can alleviate that. And I've done a little bit of research on that. And I've come up with a solution for myself that I'm going to use in my iCamper SkyCamp Mini. When I remove the, uh, the cushions out, there'll be a metal surface. I'm going to replace that with what I've decided to use, which is an adhesive indoor-outdoor carpet tile. I'm going to lay those down there and, and stick those to the metal. And I'll show you how that's done real quickly. And uh, this will give you a good tip on how to alleviate condensation buildup underneath your air mattress inside your rooftop tent. All right, so first and foremost, I've moved this outside. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the rooftop tent and uh, get that all set up. Once we get that set up, we're gonna remove the factory pad out and then I'll show you the new product. Okay, so first things first, we climb up in here. You can see that there's a two layered factory pad here. There's a top layer that actually goes back here on this metal surface and then the other one pushes up against that and uh, you can see that it's about I would say that's about maybe two and a half inches thick and I'm gonna put an X-PED mattress in here that's gonna make it quite a bit thicker but uh, then it'll be against this metal surface. Now right now I'm in the desert it's a sunny day it's in the 70s today so this metal surface is actually pretty warm but uh, once you um, drop down into low temperatures in the middle of the night in the desert, which I intend to do this weekend, um, you could end up having some condensation buildup. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this factory mattress out of here. Okay, so what I decided to get were these 24 by 24 peel and stick indoor outdoor carpet tiles. And they're the same kind of tiles that you generally find in an office space. Uh, I got them at Lowe's in stock. I did look at Home Depot, but uh, Home Depot does not carry any in stock. And the ones that they do carry on their website were 12 by 12. I like these because they're 24 by 24. I've measured things out. It looks like I'll probably need about two rows of these wide and maybe about five of these long. And then uh, once I get toward the outer edge near the ladder, I'll probably have to cut some of these down with some, uh, with some scissors or some carpet cutters. But you can see here, they're real nice indoor-outdoor. They have a lot, variety of different colors to choose from. I went with a, a light gray color. There's uh, adhesive on the back. You just peel these off and stick them right down to the metal surface. I should also add that if you don't want to go to Lowe's or Home Depot to get the carpet tiles, I will have a link in the description below to get them on Amazon. If you're trying to outfit an iCamper SkyCamp Mini, one box should do if you do the 24 by 24 tiles. Uh, if you have some other kind of rooftop tent, you just have to measure it all out and get your, get your uh, square footage and, um, and calculate out how many tiles you're gonna need, which will determine how many boxes you're gonna need. All right, so first things first, you wanna make sure that uh, the surface inside here is nice and clean. There's not a lot of dust because you want these carpet tiles to stick nicely. All right, so I laid down the first tile here. This one's laid down. What I did was I took two tiles, laid them side by side, made sure that the pattern was going in the same direction and uh, set them down from the center line out. And what I'm gonna do now is once I get the, all the center pieces laid in, then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna measure the sides here and with uh, the remaining pieces of, of uh, tiles, 
I'm gonna cut them to fit in the remaining openings here. All right, so we're gonna start on the second piece here. Flip it over. Get off the adhesive protection. Very easy. And this is one of the easiest installs I've done in a long time. That's real sticky there. I wanna make sure that I've got the same exact pattern. I wanna put this down so it butts right up to the other one. Very nice. Very, very easy. People have come across a lot of different ways to reduce condensation. I've seen people select from homedepot.com. You can also get a cork that you can roll out on here and stick down. I'm kind of partial to this carpet. It's actually designed so that it won't fray on the edges, which is real nice. So I think this is gonna have a real durable long-term solution um, effect. So now I've got the first four laid. There's actually about a three and a half inch strip of, of uh, metal here between the, the seam of the fold in piece. So I'm gonna skip over that for now. I'll come back to that and use some of my scrap to fill that in. Use a piece right here. Use a piece right here. Same direction. Boom. Boom. Looks like I might need to trim the width off of this beer by about, uh, about an inch and a half to make that work. And then I'll have this at last strip right here. So I'm gonna be able to use a lot of those last remaining pieces to cut and fill in spots to make this uh, a little bit more complete. And uh, it'll be really comfortable. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off this strip because of the overlap. Now, even though this is carpet that's not supposed to fray, because I'm cutting this, I'm actually going to take the cut side, flip it around, and stick it up over on the edge here so I don't have to worry about catching on anything. So I've cut a little bit off of this one, then I'm gonna cut the rest off of this one, flip this one around and lay these down, boom. They'll be down nice and solid. And uh, the seam will remain right down the middle, which is what I want. So what I'm gonna do is, after I fill in this little gap here with a strip, I'm probably gonna for now leave this uncovered because this is the hinge. Uh, I might be able to cover this piece right here, but I'm gonna wait until the very end to decide whether or not I'm gonna cover that because when I fold it up, uh, the nice thing is that this hinge actually lifts up and over. It doesn't just fold right here. It doesn't just fold, it actually lifts up and over. So they should be able to put a strip right here and I would want to put something there, I think, in order to um, help in reducing the condensation. But for now, I'm not going to do that. Pretty easy to cut because you just have to follow the pattern to stay on course for a relatively straight line. And I'm not really that concerned about perfection because I'll be flipping this around and putting the cut side underneath the sidewall. So what I did here because I kiss the edge here with it and this bulking here, it's okay. I'm gonna actually peel that up and then tuck it under. So, so far it's looking pretty good. Got all the main pieces down. Just need to put this piece across here and then there's a piece along the back edge there. And then I'm all the way down 
both sides right there, I'm gonna put a piece, I'll have to cut around a couple of things, but I'll have more than enough tiles here. In fact, I might have enough in a box to do two iCamper Skycamp minis. Okay, so I laid that last little piece down here. I had to cut a little notch out of the corner here to line things up a little bit better. Um, the pattern's not exactly the same here. Uh, not much I can do about that. It's just how this particular tile piece was cut. I'm not really all that concerned about that as long as the edges are nice and smooth and flat and um, it butts up really well here and it butts up really well in the middle so that nothing peels up. But uh, so far I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I got the first piece cut for right here. I put a rounded corner on it. I notched something out here because there's a, something that needs to be notched out right there. And then just work my way back, pushing it down in. And then when I get back to the corner, it's gonna be a little bit of work, but I think it's gonna go together really nice and tight. Bam. This corner's a little bit sticking up. I'm not sure if I'm that concerned about it. Just a little bit of an overlap here, so I'm gonna use this ruler to try to tuck it under there. Sure enough, it's going under. Okay, so I measured this side over here. I got the front in, pretty nice. There's a, there's a bolt here, so it's gonna stick up just a little bit, but I got this trimmed right around the whole thing pretty well. Not perfect, but not bad. And uh, I'm working on this piece here, and I cut out around these. There we go, boom. Boy, that looks perfect. Last little piece, going right in. Oh yeah, it's like magic. All right, so I think we got her. So I would say that all in all, that probably took me about two hours of actual work time. Um, add on probably another three hours for all the neighbors that came around and wanted to talk to me about my eye camper. <laughs> all right, so I got my X-Ped mats in and I am kind of a prima donna when it comes to pillows. So I actually have a full size real pillow and I put the um, pillowcase on and I put it back in the bag that the pillow came in. And uh, that should flatten down. So I plan on seeing if I can take these and leaving them up there. And I'll put another one on the other side and then I'll try to stick two uh, probably 20 degree sleeping bags up there for the summer. So there you have it, it's all finished, it's all closed up. It closed up very easily, so that makes me feel like it's not gonna be a problem to store uh, my X-Peds up there as well as two sleeping bags and two pillows, which is really fantastic. I'll never have to pack a sleep system again inside the car, and um, it'll always be up there. So whenever I get to camp, just flip up the rooftop tent, which only takes one minute, and then uh, release the valves on the X-Peds, which allows them to self-inflate, and boom, you're ready to go. Your sleep system's all set up, literally, a two minute process for getting your tent and sleep system completely rigged. So I'm really excited about it. If you have any questions, be sure to leave comments down below. I'm always happy to answer your questions. If you're not a subscriber to the Four Expedition channel, I encourage you to become one. And of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And as always, if you'd like to support Four Expedition, go to patreon.com slash Your support goes a long way to creating quality content for this channel. Until the next time, take care.